The deadlift is one of the best exercises to build tremendous strength, power, and pack on pounds of muscle. However, do them wrong, and you can greatly increase your risk of injury, especially to your back. In this video, with the help of Ed Cohen, the greatest powerlifter of all time, and Dr. Stuart McGill, the foremost authority on spine biomechanics and back pain, I'm going to give you three simple yet extremely effective steps to perform a perfect deadlift. Step one is setting up in a proper start position. For most people, set your feet just inside shoulder width with toes pointed relatively straight forward. The bar should be positioned directly over your midfoot. As you get down to the bar, there are three foundational technique pillars you need to focus on assuming for a perfect start position before the bar is moved from the ground. The first we already established with the bar positioned over the middle of your foot. This will ensure the bar is ready to be moved in a straight path. If the bar is positioned too far forward, the bar must travel back in towards the body as it's lifted from the ground. And when you're trying to lift max weights vertically from the ground, horizontal bar movement is detrimental to the efficiency of the overall lift. The second is to have the bar connected to your body. This means the bar will end up touching the shins in your start position. And no, you don't need the bar five inches away from your body just because you're really tall. Bar touching the shin. Here, and from this position, look, shoulders are over, here, I press my ass down. Think about this scenario for a moment. If you were to set up with the bar a few inches away from the shins, you lose the desired midfoot alignment and create more horizontal displacement to complete the lift. Or if you do create midfoot bar alignment and have the bar away from your shins, it means you've shifted your full body back too far and likely will be off balance and therefore unable to create efficient force and power into the rest of the lift. The final technique pillar that completes this start position harmonious trio is aligning the bar with the posterior deltoid, which is essentially where you would place the bar for a low bar back squat. If we look closely at your deltoid muscle, we find it is made up of three parts, the anterior, middle, and posterior portion. While some coaches use the cue shoulders over the bar when setting up a deadlift, I find it can be too general and can lead to more variation in the setup position. On the other hand, posterior deltoid over the bar is far more foolproof and will set the person exactly where they should be every single time and it will create a fairly vertical arm position as a side effect, which is desirable for lifting max weights from the ground. This last step is also especially crucial if you're going to use a mixed grip. This method of grabbing the barbell with one hand over and one hand under is commonly used by power lifters as it is often stronger than a double overhand hold, allowing many to lift more weight. Now, if your arms were not vertical or very close to it, the bar would likely drift away from your body to a greater extent on the under grip side as you stand up, lending the bar and your body to twist. So if you find yourself twisting in this way while using a mixed grip, you might be starting with your shoulders too far forward. Okay, before we move on to this next crucial step, if you're dealing with any aches and pains trying to deadlift, after this video, head on over to amazon.com and check out my injury fix book, Rebuilding Milo. It will show you the exact steps I use as a doctor of physical therapy to help fix injuries and help the best athletes in the world return to lifting pain-free. But for now, let's continue with today's video. Before you begin your deadlift from this proper start position, there's a crucial next step you must do. My object was, how can I use my whole body into whatever movement I'm doing? As I grab the bar and pull the tension out, all of a sudden, my every muscle from my neck down to my lower back gets squeezed and pulled in tight, which I guess is to protect my spine and maintain that position. At the same time, I try to wiggle my hips in closer to the bar under tension, and then my glutes are just ready to explode right from the bottom. Basically, build that pre-tension in your hips ever before the bars move from the ground. Yes, in my whole body, most people don't preload their hips enough. Mm -hmm. That's why their that's why their butts come up and they end up using way, way, way too much back. Stu, can you explain the science behind this approach? So the body, from a scientific point of view, 
is a linkage. It's an articulated linkage with many segments. So consider a train. You have the locomotive, and then there's a little slack in the coupling to the second car. As the locomotive moves forward a couple of inches, then it pulls out the slack, and then the second car moves. So the train locomotives actually call it stretching the train. And if you measure that in a long train, that locomotive travels a long way before the caboose actually starts to move. Well, the body is the same kind of a linkage. And what Ed was describing was you take all those little slacks out between the train cars. So your shoulder actually begins to dislocate when you pull those hundreds of kilos. So as he was saying, pulling down with the lats, he was screwing the, the, the head of the uh, humerus right into the, the, the cup of the shoulder joint to take all of that slack out. All of those great coaching cues were to couple everything stiff. So in the very end, Ed would just squeeze the bar and then unleash the hips and flew. The third and last step is proper execution or movement of the deadlift. A helpful way to think about this lift is to break it down into two parts. From the ground to the knee is similar to a squat in that your chest and hips rise at the exact same rate. Now this does not mean you start in a squat position. Rather, you assume the three fundamental pillars of proper deadlift technique and then squat it up to the knee. Step two is to hinge like an RDL to the standing position. So put it together, the sequence is squat to the knee, then RDL up to standing. Once standing, don't just drop the bar back down to the ground. Remember, every lift in the gym has two parts, an eccentric lowering and a concentric ascent. If you throw out the lowering of a deadlift, you may miss out on potential strength and muscle gains as your body has less time under tension. Yeah, big change. Instead, we want to control the descent by reversing the prior cues. Hinge or RDL to the top of the knee, and then squat the bar back down. If done correctly, you'll finish in the perfect start position, ready to start your next rep. I hope this video was helpful for teaching you proper deadlift technique. Give this video a watch next for some cues on how to squat with perfect technique, with tips from world record setting powerlifter Matt Winning and two-time Olympian Chad Vaughn.